right, so the next movie we're doing is uh, 127 Hours, uh, directed by Danny Boyle, starring James Franco. So this is 127 Hours. It's a real life movie, uh, based on true story movie, mm -hmm. uh, about a, I guess, a very headstrong guy who just likes the outdoors, who gets his arm stuck under a boulder. <laughs> in a canyon, in a, ca in a, canyon a little bit outside of Moab. Uh, it's based off. He had it. He wrote a book on it, and it's based off that. Uh, this movie is pretty much just about that. Just guy stuck with a rock, slowly going insane for 127 hours in the middle <laughs> of the desert. Um, so it's pretty simple plot, but a uh, great movie. Uh, it's got this really great soundtrack that just starts it right off and. It's kind of like a Warren Miller movie, you know, where it's just this, these aggressive uh, outdoor activity moments going on. He's, you know, driving his car crazy down a dirt road at night. He's uh, chugging Gatorade and <laughs> jumping around on rocks and going all over the place. And he just stumbles upon these two girls and they chat for a while and he shows them this cool, you know, only locals would know kind of place. And, mm -hmm. and then he gets stuck under a rock where it just, and that's where it's really interesting. I mean, you're thinking, well, now we have an hour of a movie where it's just this guy who's got his arm pinned under a rock. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's really well crafted from that point. I mean, it, yes, he's stuck in one spot, but, you know, you get the turmoil of him trying to get the rock off, the mm -hmm. different ways he's thinking. All the creative ways uh, that he comes up Yeah, he comes up it. with trying to get out, uh, him trying to conserve his water and food, him planning out, and then his moments where he just starts to lose it. And he just, you know, he has all these flashbacks. You know, he realizes he's probably going to die. So he gets that life flash before your eyes moments. And mm -hmm. just a lot of really fun, interesting things going on there. You learn a lot about the character. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting for something. I've noticed Hollywood likes this, uh, this guy stuck in one spot movie lately uh, with, <laughs> like, the devil and buried, you know. Yeah, it's, claustrophobic kind it, of horror. It, it seems yeah. to be this this little trend that they like. They're like, look, I don't know, uh, my wife thinks it's one of those directors showing off going, oh, look what I can do. This guy's stuck here for an hour. You know, I can make yeah. that kind of movie. But I think it's just, I don't know, maybe we're just really interested or getting some trend in Hollywood with it. Well, I have a theory about that. Ooh. What grade did you give? Oh, I, d I gave it a B. Um, as far as, uh, you know, it was a great quality movie, some good uh, absurdity in it with, uh, <laughs> the mental delusions and stuff but yeah. uh not cr there was still a couple times i was like is this movie over yet <laughs> but so i can't quite give it an a but definitely be worthy all right cool well i did give it an a and uh as far as your th why hollywood is doing all these claustrophobia movies uh like that we had especially this year and i just came up with this on the spot so I'm kind of a little proud of this <laughs> i think that's because in today's world with the internet and with uh, um, texting and cell phones and all these technological ways that we are never actually alone. We are always open as a society. And we're always just, you know, a text away from somebody else or something like that. Now, uh, the fear of that kind of um, solitude-ness, if you will, or the fear of that, of of being in, a, in an area that you can't get out of where you're not open to the entire world, I think is, uh, is an interesting concept for our generation. So that's my theory. Um, I love Danny Boyle as a director, and uh, if you follow his career all the way back from Shallow Grave, Train Spotting, even The Beach, which this movie kind of reminded me of a little bit, um, and then, you know, all the way up to Slumdog Millionaire, which of course he won the Oscar for a couple years ago. Uh, I think that he is one of our most talented directors, and I think this movie really proves it. It's because it's such a minimalistic story. There's, there's, you know, it's, it is. It's a man trapped under a rock for two hours, and it's such an easy movie to be able to screw up. That if you don't get it right, if you don't know how to move the story along, um, it's going to be really slow and really boring. But I think Franco's performance is great. Uh, I think he will get an Oscar nod at the very least for his performance. Um, and I would like to give uh, a supporting actor nod to The Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say that, I stole that from a friend of mine. I'm not that clever. Um, 
<laughs> but the reason I say that is because the landscape of this movie plays another character. And the way that Boyle shoots it, and he shoots this canyon, and it becomes like this antagonizing force that almost have a, has a personality of its own. Uh, but it has, you know, as the days go on and on, it has this way about it that's predictable, but he still can't do anything about it. Um, and, he, and there's lots of great ways to move the story. Um, in the movie, he talks to a video camera that he has to him because he's not sure if he's going to make it out. So he wants to leave his final thoughts with his family. And as the days are going, yeah, he's, he's kind of cracking. And in a way, this movie has a lot of similarities to Black Swan because both movies take place not within the external world, but inside the mind of the character. And the movie is always staying with the main character. And the way the music plays into it is very heavy, uh, both in Black Swan and this movie. The music is, again, almost another character and the way that it drives the story. So I love this movie a lot, and uh, I think everyone should go out and oh, see it. Oh, definitely. So...